If you've ever been interested to learn how you can convince a seller to finance you the down payment on a million dollar plus building, listen up because I'm going to explain exactly how I do it. So first of all, when I'm going and having a conversation with the seller, I have to comprehend and understand what is most important to these sellers. Because most of the time when they go and sell a property, they're just wanting to get out, right? Again, they're most likely an expert in their business. They might be steel fabricators. They might be uh, construction guys. They might be landscapers. They could be glass supply companies. It doesn't matter. But they're most likely going to be professionals and experts in their field and not real estate. So when I go and sit down with these sellers and I have this conversation about what's important to them, I'm being very intent on what I'm listening for. I want to hear some type of pain point, some issue that they're having or they're going to have in the future. And then that's what I do is I go and kind of pounce on what their biggest problem is going to be in the future. And nine times out of 10, when they sell a property, they sell a business, it's going to be Uncle Sam. They're going to have to pay a lot of taxes in, in the form of capital gains tax. So once I hear that little buzzword of capital gains or taxes from Uncle Sam, I know that I have an awesome solution that I can present to them. So most importantly, what I do is I validate that their, you know, their pain point of taxes. So I say, hey, Mr. Seller, in this case, this guy's name is Larry. I'm, sell- I'm buying this property from him in like 10 days. I say, Larry, I just want to confirm with you that you told me that you, you want to lower your taxes as much as possible. Am I on the same page with you? He's like, Nolan, I... I've got to figure out a way to get rid of Uncle Sam because I'm going to be hit with a with a huge tax burden. So I say, okay, Larry, I'm on the same page as you. I understand how important that is to you. Most importantly, though, you are in not in the real estate business. You're in the blind distribution business. You are a seller. Of, you're expert in, in distribute, you know, distributing blinds all over the country. When I, I actually am an expert and a professional in buying real estate assets, the similar same one that you have in your building right now. So what I really focus on is squeezing every single ounce of juice as I possibly can out of every deal. And that includes when the seller is having an opportunity to save more money in the form of taxes. Now, you said how important that was to you. Would you be opposed to even hearing out a way that you can save over six figures of taxes doing the same identical deal that we've been doing in the beginning? And of course, Larry and every single seller that's had that experience of paying taxes is way open-minded to that. They're like, I absolutely want to hear about this. So if we're looking at this top scenario here, I say, look, Larry, before you've met me, if you were going to sell this property to somebody else, this is how nine out of 10 property closings go. They are, you know, you have a purchase price of 1.1 million. You have a, you know, when he bought that property back in 2011, he bought it for $425,000. Now he took on a mortgage to buy that property. So at closing, the mortgage is going to get paid off. Closing costs, that's going to be title fees. That's going to be accountants or attorney fees. That's going to be um, even some, uh, you know, real estate commissions, things like that. So he's going to have these closing proceeds and a massive capital gain. So now if he's in a 35% tax bracket, he's going to have to cut a check to Uncle Sam for $236,000. Now, if a guy that's worth $500 million, $236,000 isn't a lot. But a guy that's selling a building for $1.1 million, that's like 25% of you know what he was going to end up making. So we want to try and find a way how we can mitigate that. So I said, Larry, this is what you were going to do before I introduced this another idea. Very open-minded at this point. You've, you've gotten to a point to where you've, you've created a little bit of oxytocin, which is a chemical release in their mind, which is a bonding chemical, which is really the move. You want them to become bonded to your idea and you as, as the buyer to where they're going to want to do a deal with you. But then what I'll do is I'll go down here and say, look, Larry, this is a scenario that where I think it's going to be a lot more uh, beneficial to you and your spouse or your business partners if we just tweak one little thing. So if we do the same exact steps here, the purchase price is the same, the mortgage payoff, uh, the closing costs. But what I do is I actually say instead, Larry, instead of you taking a huge you know, closing proceeds of $762,000, we are going to leave three hundred thousand dollars of your money in this deal and what this does actually is not only does it mean that you're going to continue to have cash flow because again he just sold his business so he's lost his revenue stream but number two he's going to have cash flow he's going to separate the capital gains tax into two separate years because what you'll see on this right hand column is a balloon payment in the next 36 months so if you notice, I didn't say anything about a second position. I said nothing about a mortgage payment or a lien or him financing me anything. All I said was, Larry, you are going to leave money in this deal. It's all about how I form the words and use those, use that language to where it doesn't trigger any defense responses. 
So what it ends up doing after I show him all the scenarios and how he's going to be earning $2,000 a month of net cash flow uh, that he was otherwise not going to have. And then in the future, I say, look, after 36 months, I'm going to write you another check. At first, I wrote you a check for the 1.1. Well, it's actually going to be a total of you know $800,000. But then I'm going to write you another check of $300,000. So after closing costs and after taxes and all the proceeds go away, he's going to net an extra $132,000 because he decided to leave some money in the deal. Now, again, that's not going to be for everybody. Some people's taxes are different depending upon you know the state that they're in and the deal and if they're wanting to 1031 some money. But this is a very generic way of doing deals. I do these kinds of deals probably once a month and it works nine out of 10 times because most of these sellers, again, if you can go back to it and comprehend that these sellers' most important thing is they do not want to pay a lot of taxes. This is always a solution and it's a lot easier than you think. If you position it to where you're not selling anything, you're just helping them mitigate the risk and keep more money in their pocket. Again, if you're interested in learning more about how you can position seller financing and buy million dollar buildings just like this one here, click the link below in my bio to schedule a call and join our mastermind where we teach all of our customers and all the guys in our, in our mastermind exactly how to do deals exactly like this. Again, if you're interested in learning more, click the link below in my bio to schedule a call and I'll see you on the other side.